Hey y'all, so we back at Letitia's brunch with her and Marie in the bathroom arguing. And um I have to say, Marie, as a businesswoman, as all these as a business owner, you really have to be able to check your emotions. I know this is a reality show and you have to give, but you really shouldn't give Latrice the energy. No, you're not over her trying to destroy your business. I understand that, but you can't give what you're giving right now. Like, you got to show some control over your emotions because you're giving them what they want. Um, Scan to Latrice, what she talking about, put your friend in her own institution. That's disrespectful. Um, She says, look, Marie needs to get over it. Now, I disagree with that. You can't tell somebody when to get over something. But I do think that Marie needs to learn how to control her emotions over this and deal with it in a different way. So Essie pulls Marie to the, I'm not sorry, Essie pulls Latrice to the side and decides, decides to have a conversation about how Marie feels. And and then Letitia comes and interrupts to try to pull Latrice to the side so she can have a conversation with Marie in the bathroom. They go in the bathroom and Letitia's speaking to let Marie know that Latrice wants to let her know that she went to the people and said it was going too far. And as soon as Latrice opened her mouth, she said she had nothing to do with it. And Marie was like, we can end this conversation right now. And I kind of agree. Like, I feel like although Latrice said she didn't have nothing to do with it, Latrice knew about it. She probably had her hand in it. And I don't know, her hands ain't clean to me either. So as Letitia and them, you know, finish up their arguments, disagreements, whatever's going on back there near the bathroom area, they come to the scene where um, Melanie is on the phone with Akeisha, Miss Professional, screaming in the phone how she know the owners and she don't want to be associated with this. This is embarrassing and blah, 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 blah. Like, Miss Professional, you doing too much. And probably Melanie was wrong for putting you on speaker having you yelling and screaming because I'm sure that wasn't your intentions, but it's showing your true colors. It, I told you, reality TV, if you look at my other um, review, I said it. You're going to be put on the spot, girlfriend. As this is all winding down, Maurice decides to leave. Um, Letitia's upset. You know, she's she crying to the producer how she's tired of this. She's tired of being a peacemaker. Stop being a peacemaker. Let them bitches work it out them goddamn selves. Anyway, this brunch is over. Letitia goes back to the table, try to end it with a positive note, and I'm over it. I think I talked about this too goddamn long. The shit was whack. Grow up, ladies. Get it together. Then we have the scene with Latrice and Zaddy meeting up with So Gucci and JJ um, so they could play with their country Tonka toys in the mud. Anyway, um, come to find out Latrice and um, Daddy have this land where they um, rent out the space for weddings, family reunions. I think that's pretty dope and cool. But I'm sure that was all Zaddy. Okay. But anyway, um, they sit down. After they finish playing with their Tonka toys in the mud, they sit down in the lounge and talk about the brunch. Latrice couldn't wait to talk about this brunch and how it went. And her main conversation was about Marie. For somebody that's not worried about Marie, she's talking a lot about Marie. Right? My thing with her too. Like, if Marie doesn't bother you, why is her name always in your mouth? Right now, it seems like Marie is your storyline. So, I mean, come on, um, Latrice. Like, come on, girlfriend. Now I have to give it to Akeisha on this. I'm not Akeisha, I'm sorry. I have to give it to Miss Sophia, a.k.a. So Gucci on this one because she called out Akeisha on her bullshit, talking about the place was so dirty. And she was like, pop it off. <laughs> we know where you from. Like, So she noticed the energy, too, of Miss Akeisha coming in with this stank-ass attitude like she's better than everybody, which Letitia mentioned. So Gucci also mentions that, you know, Akeisha should have been there to be supportive of Letitia's event. And I totally agree. Instead of, you know, making a scene. Um, and then again, Latrice goes to talking about bad energy and Marie. And, and again, Miss Sophia steps in and was like, there has to be some steps taken for healing. 
I agree. I agree with Miss Sophia on, you know, her and Latrice and Marie coming to a resolution. But in the confessionals, Latrice is like, I'm a grown woman. Marie, who are you? I don't even know you. Like, Marie bothers you, girl. Just say it. Marie bothers you. Okay. Then the conversation goes on to blended families and they start discussing how, they start discussing how, well, Miss Sophia start discussing how they blended their family. They sat down and had the conversation with the kids and whatever. And then JJ asks if Latrice has kids. Then they show daddy in the confessionals. He said that, you know, he wants to have a kid with Latrice. That's his soulmate. But they have a difference on timelines when they should have a baby. It seems like Latrice's whole issue is she feel like, um, Zaddy wants her to have the baby, you know, so it could slow her down. She says she don't have time for that. And he wants her to be old school, home with the baby, breastfeeding, cleaning. Again, I, I can't, you know, knock her for that. You know, we in new times and we trying to accomplish new goals and things like that. So in the confessional, you know, daddy going to say, don't be like Tamra. And I was like, oh my God, the shade is real. But again, you can't compare yourself to other people. You have to make your own decision. But I understand where daddy come in. At what point are you going to have a baby for daddy? Because you know he's up there in age, right? But anyway, that was that scene. Then we move on to the scene where Tambra is meeting with Akeisha to talk about the brunch. All right, I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of talking about this brunch at this point. But here we go. Akeisha comes in to talk about how her time was wasted at this brunch. Again, she talks about, I think she talked about the dirty plates again. Like, girl, come on with this dirty plate shit. Like, I've been to nice restaurants and the plates ain't look too clean, okay? So, stop it. But I didn't make a scene. What I did was pull a waiter to the side and ask for a new plate. So, Tambra assures Akeisha that the brunch don't normally go like that. That she knows genuinely that Letitia is trying to empower women. That's the type of person that she is. And here go Akeisha talking about it's up to the leadership if you're a leader, and I'm like, girl, I'm going to need you to stop, okay? Because you constantly just downplaying everybody that was at that damn brunch. Like, get it together, Akeisha. Like, you're supposed to be professional, and you've never been to this and this and this and this and this and this, this brunch and all this other stuff. Step up as a professional. Come to Letitia as you claim you're a professional. And again, as I mentioned in my last review, give her constructive criticism. So Akeisha feels like Letitia came to her with a very strange attitude when she came to her about the plates. But I hope she watched this back to see how she walked into the brunch with a serious attitude. And then her confessionals ain't help at all. Okay. So, um, Tamara wants to know if she's still interested in helping her with the Farrah Street project. And Keisha says she's not that petty, but girl, if you this petty on this, I hate to see what happens with the Farrah Street project. So the ladies in the scene um, with the Keisha talking about how she had issues having a baby. She went through IVF, IVB. I don't, I don't know all the, the acronyms for these situations when you're trying to have a baby. Only to find out that the babies that she did have were natural babies. So you spent all this money only to have natural babies, which is a blessing. Okay. Um, so Tamara shared with her that she, you know, she was trying to have a baby and lets her know that her and Damon are still together. Akeisha realizes that they've been together for like 16 years. But she also feels like y'all been together this long. Y'all should have, you should have a ring on your finger. And you shouldn't be committing to having a baby without, you know, having that commitment of him being your husband. To me, I say it don't matter. If the man ain't it, if he ain't going to be a father, he ain't going to be a good husband, whatever. But anyway, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole on that one. So that ends that scene. So we have the scene here with Marie laying on her couch. She has, She's having a lupus flare-up. She said it, it affects everyone differently. Like her energy is really low when she has her flare-up. She can barely move. She can barely wash herself. And um, I really feel bad for her. She's had a long day. She just came from the funeral of her grandson's mother. And she's really worried about her grandson one day asking about his mother. And I can feel her pain on that one. Um, Essie comes in to check on her. Um, and they, Marie lets it, you know, be known that, you know, on a business level, she got it all together. But on her personal level, she's in the red. And she's talking about her husband, her cheating, philandering husband. And I'm not understanding why she's still on that. But, okay. 
for you to be such a strong businesswoman, like, why do you want this man that contributes nothing to your life? Okay. But that's just me. I don't know the whole story and I'm going to move on from that. So basically Marie basically saying that she's there for everybody and you know, she's getting tired. And as he was like, you have to be able to check on your strong friends. Another part that disturbed me was like, she was like, she's going to buy her husband a Rolex because she committed to that in the beginning of the relationship. And Essie made a good point. Well, what is his commitment to continue to cheat? Like, I'm not understanding. So I don't know what kind of relationship Marie and her husband had, but none of this is sounding right. Um, I just wish um, Marie the best of health in this situation. And sometimes you got to step back from some of these situations. You can't be there for everybody. I understand your son and the grandson, but you can't be there for everybody. Because you're you killing yourself right now. Slow down. Slow down. Start thinking about you first. Then we have Latrice visiting her mom. She wants to go talk with her mom. You know about the decision of having a baby. Her mom lets her know that. You know her husband is a lot like her daddy. <laughs> you know they want. She feels like Cliff want her to have a baby to slow her down. And Latrice's issue is that she don't want to. F- have a baby for the baby to feel like she felt as a young child. Like, although she knew her father, her father wasn't really there for her. She knew her dad loved her. And she doesn't want that for her child. So my thing is, do you feel like Cliff would do that to you? You feel like Cliff would leave? Let's just forget the fact that he's up there in age. But do you feel like Cliff will leave? But I do think she mentioned something about she feels like the men in her life are not going to stay around. So, you know, she has that issue and, and, you know, I can't blame her, you know, for feeling that way. But again, like I said earlier, she has to make a decision that's best for her. So the last scene is with Atisha and Lakeisha. They're battling back and forth about who was more professional and Akeisha still talking about the dirty plate and how she feel like a, uh, Letitia came at her the wrong way when she approached her about the dirty plate. But again, as I mentioned earlier, Akeisha need to see herself on TV to see how she came off. She came in there with an attitude thinking, you know, this is not a brunch that I expected to to walk into. She wanted to be with Jackson's or Mississippi's finest or whatever. But anyway, they go back and forth about, you know, their issues with each other. Letitia let it be known that the person she was talking to on the phone was not the person she met at that brunch. And Akeisha says, I am the same person. I have to disagree. I I feel like on the phone, she was giving Letitia something else. So they end up talking about, you know, how they're still going to work on the Ferris Street project. Akeisha apologizes to Letitia if she felt that Letitia came to her brunch in a certain way. She said she wasn't there to sabotage anything she was trying to do. Uh, Whatever. It didn't feel that way, Miss Akeisha, Miss Professional. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing. This disturbed me the most. So, Keisha brings up that she met with Tamara. Tisha um, lets it be known that, you know, speaking of that, so you know them. His name was Greedy, right? And Keisha asked Letitia, do she know him? She said, well, I know, I met him through um, one of my friends. And Keisha wants to know if it's a male or a female. Letitia said, this is a female. Um, here's what disturbs me. So, Letitia, you knew that Desmond, a.k.a. Greedy, was dating your friend and that Tamara was still dealing with Greedy, a.k.a. Desmond. Like, that's foul. I hope you didn't know. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I We have to explore this because it's not looking good on you, Letitia, that you knew, that you knew. I mean, you did meet the man last season, so you had to know then. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm working this out through my, in my head. But you had to know then that she was messing with this man that was messing with Tamara. Just trifling. But anyway, we go to Akeisha and her confessional stating that, you know, Letitia was doing a lot of talking about Greedy, a.k.a. Desmond, and his so-called girlfriend. And she don't agree with women coming in and messing up a happy home. As far as she know, Tamara and Desmond have a happy home. And that's how the scene ends. And this is just a whole mess, girl. I'm side-eyeing all these bitches.
Anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you have any comments or views on what I commented on this video, come down in the comment section and we can have a discussion. I really appreciate you guys. Take care. Peace.